No one is ever likely to forget the disastrous consequences to the people and the city of Hobart when the bulk ore carrier Lake Illawarra rammed the Tasman Bridge, leaving a 128 metre gap and causing 12 deaths. It took quite a while for people to realise the impact of the loss of the Tasman Bridge. Our Prime Minister at the time, Mr Gough Whitlam, obviously shocked with the news, criticised the master of the vessel, Captain Pilk, but later apologised. No one had ever experienced such dislocation. Goods, transport, essential services, all had to be changed. Ferries were purchased, roads built, ambulance and fire services changed. Hospital cases were brought across from the Eastern Shore and Army assault craft. People who had to travel on ferries waited in long queues. And for almost three years there were regular fights with politicians and government departments on how and when the bridge would be repaired. The federal government gave a total of $44 million towards restoration work approved a second bridge of Bailey type construction and eventually announced a second permanent bridge crossing at Dowsings Point. to cast your mind back to that that Sunday when it actually happened and can you just retell the story of what it was like to be in the Monaro teetering on the edge of the broken bridge? Well, as we drove on the bridge, we was up the bridge a little way from the, um, the lower domain road when Dr Jones went past me and next thing the lights went out, the lights went out on the bridge. Next thing we wasn't the, the white line missing. And the, the boy said, stop, stop. And I said, I can't. We hit the brakes and went a little bit sideways because the bridge was still wet. And uh, when we hanging over and the car was swaying like that, she said, poke it in reverse. I said, bugger reverse, <laughs> bugger reverse, get out. I had a bit of a step back and grabbed the headroom because the car I had nowhere to stand on down on the, on the concrete or on the bridge. And, and plus we had a water, the water main was on that side of the bridge. It's been 38 years and we, no one really knew what happened. And we sh should have a sign up the bridge about the thing, but it's that regulations now saying, you know, can you put a sign up? on the footpath or something, you probably can't. <laughs> but I think it should happen quite a long time. What we've tried I'm Frank Manley, sitting here with my wife Sylvia. We were the people that owned the two-door Monaro V8. It was hanging on the Tasman Bridge January the 5th, 1975. We were down at the Arve River for the day having a picnic and on our way home, the lights on the bridge just went out. I was peering out to see what was going on. I could see that the bridge wasn't there, the bridge had gone. So I said to Frank, the bridge is gone. I had to react straight away because we only had a few more metres to go. I slammed the brakes on and the next thing we slid over the end of the bridge. You could feel the car rocking like a seesaw. We didn't know what had happened, we'd just seen the, the gap. And we didn't know that Lake Irrawarra knocked two piers down on the bridge. And all you could see down in front of you was a big whirly pull as if the boat was just finished sinking, I think. My first thoughts was get us getting out of the car and realising then that Frank couldn't get out because the bridge was broken where he could put his feet. So I went around to his side. I had to grab one of his legs and kind of pull it back so that he could fit onto the bridge and he put his hands on the top of the car, wung himself back onto the bridge. That's how he got out. 
So we just scrambled up to where the back of the car was and we were running up the bridge, waving our arms, telling everybody the bridge is gone, the bridge is gone. People would stop and ask you what had happened and we would say the bridge is gone and they wouldn't believe you and you had to convince them to, to turn around and go back towards Hobart. After the bridge, we kept using the car and later on in years, we put the Monaro in storage and I only bring it out now if someone wants to see it and I've had it up in the Launceston Museum for four months last year. After the 5th of January 1975, when the bulk ore carrier Lake Illawarra tragically collided with the Tasman Bridge, causing three spans to collapse, the effects of the uh, collapse were catastrophic. However, the federal government accepted that rebuilding the Tasman Bridge was not enough. Like the Tasmanian government, it agreed that Hobart should never again be allowed to run the risk of losing its only road link between Western and Eastern Hobart.